Jurassic World Camp Cretaceous has officially three seasons and a fourth coming soon, Netflix's new show. And with them has come loads of fights, new dinosaurs, and of course, new kills to add to the count. Hey guys, how you all doing? Rexy's Gaming Bro back here. Hope you're having a good day. Just want to remind you to hit the subscribe button and leave a like for this video as it helps the channel grow every day. And for today's video, we're going to be discussing the top 10 deaths of Camp Cretaceous from seasons 1 to 2. Now we'll be ranking them on how memorable they were, how unique they were, and also how violent they were. And with that, I think we should begin. Here is the top 10 kills in Jurassic World Camp Cretaceous so far. <laughs> So for number 10, I think we should start with actually the first death of the whole show, which is of the Brachiosaurus, which was done by the Indominus Rex, which shows that it didn't just go for a Patasaurus when it came to lovely sauropods. This is actually, this is the first kill that we actually get, which is in episode 4 of season 1, I think, so halfway through, and it's just when the, the campers um, come face to face with the, for the first time with the Indominus Rex, which... Um, they get to see it literally pull it down. Well, they don't actually see the Indominus Rex as it's actually camouflaged during this scene, which we'll discuss later in the video. And the way it's actually killed actually is very similar to the Jurassic World Evolution death animation of sauropods, where the Indominus would grab its leg, then the neck, and pull it down. And I think it's a great way of um, actually setting up the upcoming deaths, especially for the season as they're not, like, too horrifying, well, they are for the Brachiosaurus, of course, but they show it in a, as brutal, but more action-y. And I think each season's first death actually does this very well. And speaking of which, at number 9, the Ceratosaurus from Season 3. Now, Ceratosaurus has made his ultimate return, well, kind of, in Camp Cretaceous, having some scenes in Season 2 around a waterhole where we actually got to see a brand new version, as well as the original JP3 variant. However, in Season 3, its only scene was actually in the first episode, where it was walking through the jungle by itself, when it was suddenly grabbed and ripped apart by one of the Scorpius Rexes. And it was just very cool to see, as it doesn't even get to react, as the Scorpius Rex literally pounces at it and is killed. Now, the one strange thing about this death is that it's not poisoned by the Scorpius Rex. Explain why, um, at the end of the episode, we return to the Ceratosaurus corpse, and we see that it now has, um, multiple poison quills in its skin. It's a little strange nitpick, but I do want to point it out, because it sort of shows the, um, it actually kind of shows the clumsiness of the Scorpius Rex compared to Indominus Rex or Indoraptor. And trust me, guys, we're going to see more of Scorpius Rex's kills on this list. But I love how it sets it up as it's going to be mysterious. The Scorpius Rex, we don't get to really see it. And then we get to see that it's going to be much more dangerous to the campers than the Indominus Rex was. I'm not going to say it's more dangerous than the Indominus Rex. If you want to see my opinions on that, check my video on which hybrid is the most dangerous, in my opinion. But with that... Let's go to number eight, Eddie. No, not that Eddie. This Eddie. Eddie is one of the scientists that works for Dr. Wu that we see in season one, and he is killed tragically and poetically on his birthday. And this happens after he tries to leave the kids um, for their van when the Indominus Rex smashes through the jungle into the car. And it actually tries to go into the car, and when um, Eddie tries to go underneath it and hide, the Indominus moves it and then um, starts to eat him. Now, while we don't get to see um, the Indominus eating, we act one positive about this is we actually get to hear the crunching of the bones and stuff, which is one thing Camp Cretaceous was able to do so well, in my opinion. It's a way of them showing that they can't, like, visually show these deaths, but they can... 
they can make you hear every bit of detail. And that's what I love about this death so much. And fun fact, actually, um, originally this whole scene was actually supposed to be with the Carnotaurus, Toro. However, for some reason in the finished version, they changed it to the Indominus Rex. I think it still works, and poor guy that was born on his birthday and was killed on his birthday. Number seven is actually our first season two death, which is Hap, one of the um, three um, people to come to the island and were working to deal with the kids. Now, in the little twist for the show, it turns out that Hap is actually trying to save the kids, which I didn't really expect that, but I actually really love Hap as a character. He's funny, but also um, very strange. But I love his death because it's so brutal. And I know some people, for some strange reason, thought that um he survived his attack. I don't know how they thought it. I mean, he was facing off against three Baryonyx to protect the kids. Like, he literally gave his life to let the other kids, well, Brooklyn, Brooklyn, Kenji, and Ben escape. And he stole three Baryonyx. There's no way he was going to survive. But this scene has action, comedy, and... um. A good emotional payoff, like, you he's like, I know some people have compared him to Kylo Ren, actually, which is a strange one, but I'll use it for this video. Some people have said that, like, you hate, you don't like him, you don't trust him, you hate him at the beginning, but at the end, you feel bad for when he goes. Though, honestly, for me, I can't agree with that for Kylo Ren, because he killed Han Solo. But anyway, anyway, so, this is a memorable death but not the first of season two, because trust me, despite what season three promised with there being a death every episode, but season two had some very memorable ones. And number six, the Sinoceratops. Now we don't get to actually really see this death. We actually see the aftermath of it. So while Darius um, goes into one of the um, tents for the um, for Mitch and, Mitch and Tiff, well, specifically, it's supposed to be Hap's tent. He discovers um, a lot of creepy things, including some knives, some guns, and something covered in a cloth. And when he removes it, it's a Sinoceratops. Now, don't get me wrong. It was, an, it was a brutal, violent thing to see. Like, we only get to see, like, the horn of it, but we know it's a Sinoceratops. We see the color, we see the shape. Thank God it wasn't trike, because that would have meant it's only seen in the show was it, well, part of its head. But this is so memorable because it's the first time we really get to see the poacher side of um, Jurassic Park. Because, like, it's been a staple of the franchise since The Lost World with Roland Tembo, um, who's one of the best characters, who wanted to hunt down and kill the bull T-Rex throughout the whole Lost World. And while he didn't get to succeed, he still did um, defeat it by tranquilizing it. But this is the first time we actually get to see the poaching in the franchise, and it's so memorable, and especially the part where Mitch c reveals that him and Tiff are actually poachers, and him holding that knife while saying, well, what are you doing in here, little D, is so tense and stuff, and I love this death for it. It's not the kill itself, but the aftermath that makes it so good. Now, number five is actually a surprising one for many, is the Scorpius Rexes. Now, the Scorpius Rexes are, well, spoiler alert, they were revealed to have two Scorpius Rex instead of one, which was a nice twist, and their death came from their own clumsiness, you might say, because while um, Blue was trying to fight both of them, and actually was actually in some cases doing really well because they were too busy fighting each other, the kids managed to, um, bring down the Jurassic Park Visitor Center, which is where the fight was taking place, on top of them. After the campers and Blue escape, they return to actually look at the destroyed Visitor Center, which is basically also a death in itself, because it's basically saying Jurassic Park is dead now. Um, we see actually the parts of um, the Scorpius Rex's bodies, and, well, it was a brutal death for them, not gonna lie, but it was very memorable. It was a lovely way to save them. Number four, the mercenary that was killed by Rexy. This was a very, this was actually a really unique kill for me because it's, it was dark, it was brutal, and 
It proves that Rexy is not as um, lazy as some people say, because trust me, her kill count has go is getting higher and higher by the day. Because in the ninth episode of um, season three, the kids actually run into um, some mercenaries, which are later to revealed to be working with Henry Wu and um, are hired by Eli Mills. And this whole section takes place in Fallen Kingdom. So while Rexy was unable to get that ye rain yellow rain-coated mercenary and was robbed by that darn Moza, um, Rexy was able to get a kill earlier because as soon as one of the helicopters lands to retrieve the kids, Rexy appears and in a very beautiful shot tries to pull on the helicopter that some of the kids were in because they got split up because Rexy sort of interrupted the whole hello hi introductions. Um, and after the helicopter manages to escape barely, the mercenary that was left behind tries to call them to come down but then turns around and the Rex takes a huge chomp of him. Now while it's fully off screen, we get that last shot that I'm pretty sure I've used plenty of times of the guy literally about to be clamped down on by Rexy. And even when it cuts, you hear that crunch, which again, Time Cretaceous is so good for the sound effects for the death. Number three, Mitch. As we mentioned before, he gave us a tense scene with that Sinoceratops head. Ugh, gives us chills. But again, Rexy ups her kill count because here's fun fact, Mitch is actually her second confirmed kill before um, both the mercenary and um, Eli Mills in Fallen Kingdom. But what happens is after Mitch and Tiff um, are bested by the kids and a stampede of dinosaurs come by, Mitch is caught in one of his own traps and with the guns broken, they discover that the T-Rex is coming. Now, guess what happens to him? He's tied up, his wife then leaves him, and while screaming for her to come back and save him, the T-Rex comes behind him, stares him down, and while he's still holding the destroyed gun, he tries to shoot her in like a hopeless effort of staying alive, and then the Rex roars, we see him scream, and he is chomped upon. And the funniest part about this whole death is two of the Baryonyx, Chaos and Limbo, are watching by in the foliage, and literally they have a look of, yeah, we're not going anywhere near that. You can have him, Rexy. He's fine. We'll go and get his wife. There you go. It's so fun. It has horror. It has comedy. It has everything. Say goodbye, Mitch. Too bad you didn't know where you put your darn traps. Now, number two is actually probably the one that got most people um, crying or teary. And let me tell you, it felt like a knife was put through me. Grim the Baryonyx. Some of you may be surprised at this not being number one, because many people have put it in number one. But I'll explain why after honorable mentions. Grim is one of the three Baryonyx that we follow throughout season two. And after being rescued by um, both the kids and um, the other two Baryonyx, those being Limbo and Chaos, we follow their, this um, family of berries um, throughout the show. We see all three of them huddle around together sleeping, and then we hear Mitch and Tiff. They start arguing, and unfortunately, Grim hears them and immediately everybody is screaming, no, don't do it, Grim. And while the two poachers are trying to get to the watering hole, Grim charges them and is gunned down. Now, what I love about this death is its simplicity. The way it, in this scene, it's presented like as a real thing. It's not like with Indominus Rex in Jurassic World where it took like dozens of gunshots and didn't even struggle like it felt some of them but it still was going crazy one shot and grim was out for the count we don't get to see his full body we just get to see like part of it and the way that it sets up the poachers as like heartless evil beings like as they state we'll come back for it later as if it means nothing and then that shot of the other two baryonyx is finding um the corpse of him oz Heartbroken. It was t 
too cruel, but fortunately, they got some revenge. Now, before we get to number one, which you probably know what it is, I want to give honorable mentions from each season. From season one, I want to give it to the Jurassic World workers at the um, zip line that were killed by the Indominus Rex, because this was the only time we actually got to see the Indominus Rex do its camouflage again. It's a lovely kill, and again, you don't get to see it, but you get to hear all the sounds. And the fact that the kids literally are forced to watch this, like they have nowhere to go. It's just brutal, lovely. Now season two's honorable mention is actually its first death, the Parasaurolophus. As the T-Rex um, ambushes it while it's running with um, the kids, and she just bites down on it, you hear it, you see her actually throw it against a tree and then crush its neck and then drag it away. And for season three, my honorable mention again goes to a Parasaurolophus, but this time killed by the Scorpius Rex. After Yaz goes to search for um, the antidote for the Scorpius Venom that's affecting um, Sammy, she runs up to the previous raptor paddock from, from Jurassic World, where suddenly the world becomes silent, we, we hear crunching and rummaging of a corpse, and then we see the Scorpius Rexes eating th from a Paro's body. The scene is so tense. Like, we only get to, like the Sino's death, we get to see the aftermath, but this one, so brutal, so dark, and it's so tense, because, like, you know if um, Yaz makes one wrong move, she's next on the menu. But... With that all out of the way, my number one pick is Tiff. This, oh yeah, this is the most pleasure I've had in this show. Let's recap on what happened to Tiff after. She kills Grimm, who was number two on the list. She leaves her husband. She abandons the kids because, well, they've kind of ruined her life, even though who cares? It's going to get worse for her. And she's escaping on her, on her yacht. But then the two Baryonyx come on board, and we see them on the other side of the um, boat as they look th through the window, staring her down. And all you get to know of it is she screams, and they roar victorious. It is a awesome death, guys. We don't we. It's not like too violent and stuff, but the way that she literally stares at her own death. As her reflection is shown in the window, is so beautiful. As you see the pure fear in her eyes, and like for the Baryonyx, you're like, yes, kill her. It's it's so beautifully done, guys. Beautiful, and it makes us feel so happy that the one who shot down Grimm, these guys got the revenge, and we all were happy. And in fact, it act they may have actually given her corpse to a baby Baryonyx, and I'll explain that in a future video. But what do you guys think, guys? What is your favorite deaths from Camp Cretaceous so far? And remember guys, with season four on its way, probably in September, we'll have more deaths, of course, to count up, but when those do, we if it's the last season, maybe we'll do a redo of this one, maybe a top 20, I don't know. But leave in the comments what your favorite deaths, at least your top three, and maybe why they are. And if you've enjoyed this video, guys, I'd appreciate the like, and remember to hit the subscribe button to join the hunt, and leave a like, of course. Be safe, have a good day, guys, and until next time, I'll see you later. Bye-bye!